Today we're going to be talking about a very serious illness caused by a bacterium that was never intended to interact with human hosts. It's a bacterium that we've inadvertently introduced into our own food supply through the process of industrial agriculture. The victims of this disease are often as unsuspecting as this three-year-old boy who did what millions of Americans do every day. He ate a hamburger while on a vacation with his family. Santi had been a healthy, active little boy until the summer of his third year when his family took a trip to the beach several hours from their home. His parents had booked a suite in a beautiful beach resort, and the children were so eager to get there that they didn't even want to stop for lunch during the four-hour drive. The parents compromised and decided to pick up some hamburgers from a drive through fast food restaurant just off the highway. Initially, Santi felt fine after eating his hamburger, but three days after their arrival at the resort, he started complaining of a stomach ache. The next day, he began to have diarrhea, and the following day, his mother was alarmed to see blood in the diarrhea. She left her older daughter and her husband at the hotel and drove Santi to the nearest hospital emergency room, where the physician on duty recognized the signs of inflammatory colitis. At the hospital, the physician then ordered blood tests and a stool culture and gave Santi an empiric course of antibiotics. Four days later, his stool cultures came back positive for Shiga toxigenic E. coli, also called STEC for short. Infection with this enterohemorrhagic strain of E. coli is an example of zoonosis, a process by which an infectious agent is transmitted between species, in this case from cows to humans, through contaminated food. These bacteria live inside the cow's gut without causing disease. They're commensals that are tolerated by the bovine immune system. But with the rise of industrial farming methods and the mass production of beef in the US and increasingly in other parts of the world, animal feces often end up contaminating our food supply. Like many commercially produced food products, the hamburger that Santi ate contained meat from many different animals raised in confined animal feeding operations or CAFOs. Lakes of animal manure frequently surround these factory farms and during slaughter, underpaid workers are all too often forced to rapidly separate the usable meat from waste. Spillage of intestinal contents is common in slaughterhouses like these, and if the resulting meat isn't completely cooked, dangerous pathogens can be transmitted to humans through food. The STEC bacterium is a particularly pathogenic strain of E. coli in humans because its DNA has been altered by infection with a bacteriophage. The bacteriophage injects DNA segments that code for the production of Shiga-like toxin as well as new bacteriophages. Once ingested by humans, the STEC bacterium displays adhesion and effacement capabilities. It first attaches to the surface of intestinal epithelial cells via fimbriae. Then it uses a microscopic syringe, a type 3 secretion system, to inject bacterial virulence factors into the cell that destroy the microvilli. Once STEC has colonized the human gut in this way, it starts producing the two-part Shiga-like toxin. The B subunit forms a donut-shaped entry portal through which the toxic A subunit can then enter the enterocytes. This leads to cell death and the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which results in local inflammation, including inflammation of nearby small blood vessels. The Shiga-like toxin can then enter these blood vessels, causing endothelial damage and leading to the bloody diarrhea seen in cases like Santis. In some cases, the toxin enters the systemic circulation and causes thrombotic microangiopathy, a pathological process that leads to renal failure or hemolytic uremic syndrome, also called HUS, in about 10 to 15 percent of children who become infected with STEC. Inside the small blood vessels, the toxin causes swelling and detachment of endothelial cells, as well as platelet aggregation and thrombosis. 
the formation of clots inside these blood vessels can partially or completely occlude blood vessels, causing damage to red blood cells and ischemia in the tissue served by those vessels. Damage to the small vessels of the kidneys, like those that make up the glomeruli, can result in the life-threatening condition called HUS. One week after the onset of his diarrhea, Santi had a CBC and urinalysis that showed he was developing the systemic signs of hemolytic uremic syndrome. He was admitted to the hospital and initially started on aggressive hydration therapy to protect his kidneys. But two days later, his blood platelet counts dropped, indicating that his platelets were being consumed in the form of small vessel microthrombi. Santi's blood smear also showed red blood cell fragments or schistocytes, evidence of extensive red blood cell damage. When his blood creatinine levels rose and his urinalysis showed protein and red cells in the urine, Santi's physicians gently advised his parents that their little boy was now facing renal failure, secondary to HUS. As his renal function worsened and urine output decreased, his fluid intake now had to be strictly limited to just a few small sips a day. His mother was given a dense sponge in the shape of a small bear and told that she could dip the sponge in water and allow the boy to suck on it to satisfy his increasing thirst. Santi begged for water during the last days of his life. His mother remembers him sucking on the sponge so desperately that he bit the head off of the small sponge animal. Dialysis treatment was initiated, but his kidney function failed to recover, and he developed seizures. Seventeen days after he ate the contaminated hamburger, this three-year-old boy died. Surprisingly, antibiotics are not routinely used to treat infection with STEC. In many cases, killing the microbe has actually led to more severe disease as large amounts of toxin are released when the bacteria die. There's also evidence to suggest that the genes for toxin production are upregulated in bacteria that sense their imminent destruction. So treatment is mainly supportive during the early stages of STEC infection. It was later found that several other cases of STEC were linked to contaminated hamburger meat that was distributed to many restaurants throughout the country, including the one where Santi's family ate. Because of this, there were also several cases of HUS similar to Santi's, underscoring how our means of food production can generate emerging infections that affect us all as potential consumers of unsafe food.